To explain the birth of Jesus, Matthew divided the genealogy of Jesus into three periods to emphasize the importance and necessity of this event. Physically, Jesus is a descendant of Abraham and David. But according to the scripture, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. We see that Jesus is the son of the Holy Spirit. After the Israelites turned away from the faith, God found no righteous person from the time of Abraham to David. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to save and redeem the people of Israel. This is the reason for the birth of Jesus. Matthew did not record the genealogy of Jesus from the time of Adam or Noah, but from Abraham. To understand this, we need to consider the covenants that God made in each period. The covenant with Adam, with Noah, and with Abraham. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. This is the covenant that God made with Adam. But we see that Adam and Eve did not keep this covenant. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Adam and Eve did not keep the covenant and ate the forbidden fruit. However, did they die immediately after eating? No, that did not happen. Was God's covenant not accurate? The Bible records, For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This death was not an immediate physical death, but a spiritual death. The covenant with Adam was fulfilled when the souls of Adam and Eve died after they ate the forbidden fruit. God made the covenant and fulfilled it during Adam's lifetime. After Adam sinned, God left him and chose another righteous person, Noah. He made a new covenant with Noah to build an ark to save his family and the righteous from the flood, to judge the corrupt world of Adam. Noah's period was similar to Adam's. God made a covenant and fulfilled it during that time. But in Abraham's time, the situation was different. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. We see that although God made a covenant with Abraham, this covenant was not fulfilled immediately in Abraham's time, but took many generations, from Moses through the judges to David. Finally, the covenant was fulfilled through the birth of Jesus. Through the three periods of Adam, Noah, and Abraham, we see that in Adam's and Noah's times, God made a covenant and fulfilled it during their lifetimes. However, in Abraham's time, the covenant was not fulfilled immediately, but extended through many generations and was ultimately fulfilled with the birth of Jesus. Because from the time of Adam to David, God did not find any righteous person sufficient to fully fulfill the covenant, he used his only son Jesus to complete the covenant and to transition from the physical era to the spiritual era. Amen.